for today's training, I wanted to focus on um, a problem that we ran into with a third party that we integrate with. Uh, we at Atomic Jolt work with a company called Instructure, which provides a learning management system called Canvas. So Canvas has an API and they've implemented OAuth for authentication. And along with the OAuth, they've implemented refresh tokens. So whenever you make a request to the Canvas API, it's possible that your uh, token has expired. And if your token is expired, you need to uh, reach out to Canvas to using their API and use your original token, the refresh token, to get a new token so that you can continue to make requests. The problem that we ran into is that we write most of our code client-side these days. So our clients can make multiple API requests to multiple servers, which then can all expire at the same time, resulting in a race condition. So, for example, if I have my client make a request and it hits server number one, and server number one makes a request to Canvas, and Canvas responds with a you must refresh your token response, uh, which comes back as a 401, then server number one needs to make that request to get a new token. However, almost simultaneously, server number two receives the same response when it makes an API request to Canvas, and it's told that it needs to refresh its token. So now I have two processes, both of which can call to Canvas to refresh the token. The problem here is that every time you request a new refresh token, your um, previous requests are thrown away. So if server one requests a refresh token and then receives a successful response, it then attempts to make a new request using that refresh token. However, in the meantime, server number two has also requested a new refresh token and so, or I'm sorry, a new token using its refresh token. So server number two receives that token. Now the only valid token is server number two's token and server number one has an invalid token. So it then attempts to refresh the token again and both servers will do this basically forever um, as they fight for whoever gets the uh, valid token. So to prevent this, what we wanna do is say the first person to receive the message that their token is invalid is the one who gets to make the request. And all other processes, whether they're on the same server or different servers, have to wait. And the way that we handle this is um, with a select for update inside of a Postgres database. Now, Ruby on Rails actually makes this really simple and really nice. So if we wanna go here and we'll look at the code, um, I have this refreshably method created uh, right here. So if we look at how Refreshably is used, let's just scroll up, um, you'll notice that we have these wrappers around a put, a post, a get, and a delete. Um, each one of those basically generates a full URL, which is the, abs uh, the actual URL needed to, to call a specific Canvas instance. Um, API URL is just a relative URL. So this full URL just gets the full HTTP, um, you know, whatever, instructure.com slash API URL. We wrap that um, in a block. So each one of the actual requests we're using HTTP, HTTP party are wrapped by Refreshably. So now if we look at Refreshably, you'll notice that the first thing we do is we yield to the code that we're that originally called us. So yield will effectively call HTTP party.post or .get and then give us a result. And then we check that result. And check result looks for um, a 401. So if you get a 200 or a 201, you're good. So you can just return the result and everybody's happy. But if I get a 401 and the headers say you need to authenticate, then we raise a specific exception called refresh token required we capture that refresh token required in Refreshably. So this basically eliminates, it dries up our code, eliminates duplication, because we don't want to be doing this in every single one of our requests up above. 
um, and Ruby's blocks make that really simple to do. Um, so we rescue the refresh token required and then if we have the appropriate options, which these options are what allow us to refresh the token, then we go into a transaction. So our th authentication table is the one who actually holds these tokens. And then um, we enter a transaction and we call authentication lock. So this is just one method that does one thing. Um, and we did that for testing and I'll show the testing here in a minute. The method calls authentication.lock true and underneath the hood what that does is it calls a select for update so we find a single authentication object um, using a select for update and what that does inside of Postgres is it locks the row. Now what happens um, when other processes make this request when they call authentication lock they will block as long as this row is locked. So the first process to have hit this code and gotten the 401 um, will succeed. It won't lock right here. All other processes will, will block right here. Okay, so I get the authentication. And if the value returned from the database is equivalent to the value that I currently have, in other words, if both of these tokens are the same, then I can call this refresh token method. And all the refresh token method does is it calls out to Canvas and... Um, calls their API endpoint, you can see it right here with login OAuth2 token, and then it, result, it returns the access token. Uh, we take that access token, we save it to the database. Now, when I do a object.save with the bang, that unlocks the row. So all of this happens relatively quickly. We get the new token, we unlock the row, and when we unlock the row, the other processes, the ones that didn't get there first, will then get their authentication object back, the token will be different than the one that they have in memory, which is fine, um, because then we're just going to use that new authentication object. And now any subsequent requests made to the API will have the new token. And you'll notice here we've also used Ruby's retry. So we're going to retry our initial request, which allows us to very easily you know, call the API endpoint that we originally intended and return the results successfully to the client. Okay, so um, Ruby and Ruby on Rails, in fact, I guess active record, make this process really simple. Uh, it's really elegant and really nice. Uh, testing this, however, is relatively difficult. So uh, we wrote a spec because this is a critical piece of code and it's actually important to test it correctly. If you look at the uh, spec, we've gone with a couple of common um, tests, like if we get a 404 without the authentication, we raise a response and so on and so forth. However, we also have this block right here, which is where the interesting code happens. If we receive concurrent requests, we need to make sure that only one of those requests makes the post to get the OAuth2 token. Um, and in order to do this, uh, we used a piece of code in this breakpoints.rb. Uh, there's an article which I'll include in the links uh, at this eng.flip.com where they wrote a class to test this. We originally tried, um, uh, what's it called, something Ruby breaks or something, but had a number of problems with the gem. And so we ended up just using this code and modifying it for our needs. So this uses Ruby threads to simulate uh, concurrent requests to that method. So the first thing we do is uh, we add a breakpoint. Now, if you remember, in our code, we had this method called get authentication lock. And it looks really strange because it's only one line and it's off by itself. But by doing this, we can reach inside of this class and add breakpoints around that single method because that's the method where we need to stop before and after. So um, this adds a breakpoint before and after and then aliases the method. Um, this allows us to break at that breakpoint and transition uh, control back to the main thread and stop the uh, current thread and so on and so forth. We'll include this a link to this code uh, in the video notes. So not to worry too much about what's going on instead of breakpoints other than it allows you to start multiple threads, run the threads to a given point, stop the threads, um, and then switch the context so that you have you can switch between thread one and thread two.
So we expect that thread one is going to be the one to actually do the post to receive the refresh token. We expect thread two to not do that. Um, and that's critical that it does not uh, make that post request because otherwise we can get multiple tokens and only the last token wins. So what we do is we run thread one just until after we get the lock. So at this point, the database should be locked. Then we run thread two until just before that lock, um, which ensures that thread two has run to that point. At that uh, point in the code, then we can tell, hey, tell thread two to finish. We don't want to wait for it because thread two will block um, as long as thread one has the database locked. And that's what we're testing for. So if we did a finish wait right here, uh, our test will lock up. So we have to tell thread two to just attempt to finish running its code. Um, and then we sleep the main uh, test thread so that uh, thread two has sufficient time to finish or potentially you know, attempt to finish. At this point then, we can just run um, thread one until it's complete because that will unlock the database and we can uh, run thread two until it's complete. We have to do finish and wait on both of the threads. Otherwise the test will proceed even while those threads are still running and you'll end up with some strange errors because you could have these expects fail in the middle of a different test. So we wanna make sure both of those threads are done before um, leaving this test. And then after the test is done, we actually have to disconnect the, the connection pool, otherwise there's some um, active record connections left over here. Inside of these blocks, then we're able to test to make sure that the first get returns a 401. So this initial result is what's gonna return a 401 with the appropriate headers, which will trigger the request to get a new refresh token. We make the same request again, but the second time we return um, a different result, which should then succeed. And this allows us to test the concurrent um, threads. So if I pull up a terminal. All right, so here's a terminal. Um, if I run my test, we can verify that it succeeds. So you can see that we successfully managed to test that the uh, concurrent requests were working successfully. If I go in and I remove the lock, however, and then run the tests, we can verify that indeed um, this fails because the second thread should not have called uh, the refresh token endpoint, but it did. So let's put our lock back. And then the other thing we can test here is if we take this out of a transaction, this should also fail. we should get a um, thread error now that it's outside of the transaction. So we've validated that our tests are successfully testing the concurrency and that we are making the, we're successfully getting a, a new token while at the same time avoiding this race condition. That's it.